British Railways is under commercial pressure. This pressure comes from changing expectations of what we must do, and it comes from the action of our competitors. Everyone on British Railways is affected by this pressure. The Civil Engineering Department is affected. We must make effective use of our resources. This is materials and the effort we put into our work. We must reduce the cost of our track, that's both maintenance and renewal costs. We must have effective relaying methods. How should we respond to this pressure for change? We've done relaying by pre-assembly methods for a number of years now. Are we satisfied with it? Is there a better way? It has its problems. First, the train must be marshalled correctly and must arrive the right way round. And there are the joints, which themselves lead to a severe temporary speed restriction and eventually to a ballast memory that gives us problems. Let's look at a better way of relaying track. Loose sleeper relaying. First, the materials train. Loose sleeper relaying can be done equally by twin jib track relaying machine or single line gantries. In either case, the new rails must be laid out in advance. The single line gantries are brought to sight on the rear of the train and their wagons require removable top sections when in this position. A loose sleeper beam may be brought on one of the empty wagons. A grader is necessary. The grader may travel between the two single line gantries if this makes it convenient for offloading. The new sleepers are next. They are loaded across the wagons, two tiers high and securely strapped down for travel. Next to the locomotive are two empty wagons for the old track. This number is usually sufficient for any length of job and for any number of loaded wagons. Now for the relaying cycle. This is the old track which has been recently reballasted. It must now be relayed. The first job is for the single line gantries with the loose sleeper beam attached to lift out the old track from behind the train and deposit it onto the empty wagons. This leaves the ballast uneven. When sufficient old track has been removed, the grader sets to work to level the top surface. It is not good enough to level this surface manually. A high quality grading machine is essential at this stage to achieve a good and lasting top in the finished track. Now that the ballast surface has been graded to a high standard, the single line gantries and beam bring in the new sleepers attached at half their ultimate spacing when in the track. Each beam load of sleepers is deposited as two groups. First, alternate sleepers are detached from the beam. Then, the beam shifts along and the remainder are laid as an adjacent group. By this process, sleepers are laid throughout the job. As soon as sleepers start to be laid, we can install the new continuously welded rails. A rail threader is used to draw the rails into position behind it as it progresses throughout the job towards the train. As soon as all the new rail is installed and clipped down, ballast shoulders must be deposited to stabilise the new track with its continuously welded rail. Don't forget that as part of the installation of the new rail, it must be welded wherever practicable. All these processes form a continuous cycle throughout the length of the job. Now that we've seen the basic cycle of loose sleeper relaying, let's see it in action, this time with a twin jib track relaying machine. Once the track relaying machine has become operational, it carries the grader down to the point at which work can begin. In this case, a panel of old track has already been removed and the ballast is ready to receive the grader. After the grader has been offloaded, the loose sleeper beam is attached to the track relaying machine. The hooks and outriggers on the beam enable it to lift panels of old track just as easily as it handles new loose sleepers.
the old track is carried back for stacking at the loco end of the materials train. The size of the grader is an important feature. It is low enough to be cleared by the loose sleeper beam and its load. This applies both in twin jib and single line gantry work. Once the panel of old track on the beam is clear, the grader can proceed to level the ballast. The driver has a clear view of the blade from his cab. From here, he controls the blade and keeps an eye on ballast buildup in front of it. With the grader beginning to smooth the ballast, the shape of the blade may be varied by the driver. He can alter the depth of the central and side sections from his cab, although the blade depth over the rail seat area remains constant. Directly behind the blade is a vibrating plate compactor. The rail seat area is left with a smooth longitudinal profile slightly higher than the rest of the graded ballast. Whilst the grading is underway, the cycle of work continues. Back at the materials train, new sleepers are being hooked onto the loose sleeper beam. These will be carried down to the stretch of freshly graded ballast. To obtain the correct set down point for the new group of loose sleepers, a chalk mark is made on the rail. The leading sleeper in that group will be deposited level with the chalk mark. The single line gantry makes two deposits of alternate sleepers and so two chalk marks 30 feet apart are necessary. On this beam, the sleepers are already correctly spaced and ready for lowering into position. As they are lowered, the sleepers are checked for alignment at each end. When the hooks have been detached, back goes the track relaying machine with the beam. At this stage, the longitudinal position of the sleepers is checked with the tape. In the loose sleeper relaying system, only minor adjustments are necessary when it comes to alignment. As soon as the sleepers have been laid, the threader can lift the rails into position, proceeding steadily along the length of the job. As a one-man operated unit, the threader represents a very economical and effective way of installing rail.
The pandrel clips and insulators are now placed in position, ready to be driven home mechanically. Whenever practicable, the rail joints should be welded. <laughs> Ballast must now be deposited. The relaying job's just completed and we're open for traffic at 40 miles an hour. The quality of the job is that good. The geometry is that good. We've eliminated all the joints we used to have at this stage of the work, and we'll have the temporary speed restriction up much higher very soon. That's better for the running of our trains, and if it's good for our business, it must be good for our customers. We've put it in right, it'll stay right, we can prove it, so let's do it.